Hello, it's Sunday and the entire nation's waiting to see the exact nature of the extended lockdown. As you must have heard a million times by now, it's virtually certain that there will be an extension of the lockdown, probably for two weeks, maybe more, who knows. But it's also becoming increasingly clear that it, it may well be a, some sort of a staggered lockdown with different levels of severity depending on how bad coronavirus is in a particular area or a particular district. We keep hearing about this colour coding where there will be a green zone where there are not too many coronavirus cases and therefore a lot more flexibility. An amber zone where there may be a couple of cases of coronavirus but it's not really spreading too much. So some movement but not as, as bad as in the red zone and the red zone is where there are a number of coronavirus cases, reasons to be concerned and therefore there will almost certainly be a very extensive lockdown in these areas. Now when are we going to find out about this? Well ministries are reopening tomorrow in some form or the other. So the expectation is that the Prime Minister is going to come out and address the nation perhaps Monday night but who really knows? We're waiting to find that out. We're also, of course, waiting to see the exact nature of some sort of an enhanced economic package because people are worrying about the impact of the economy, especially on the poor, on migrant labors, on small industries, on micro industries, on startups. So what the Prime Minister is actually going to announce on that is something that we will wait to see. Uh, it's very possible, of course, that the economic package itself comes from the finance minister or someone else. So we are pretty much in wait and watch mode right now. So here are the major stories that you should be tracking. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who held a four-hour meet with at least 13 chief ministers on video conference on Saturday, has indicated that the lockdown amid the COVID-19 pandemic would be extended by two weeks after considering the requests of chief ministers who preferred a longer containment period. The lockdown was scheduled to end on Tuesday. Sources say after the Prime Minister's Jan P. Jahan P. comment, the Council of Ministers has been asked to resume work from Monday. Reports say the government is considering demarcating the country into three zones, red, yellow and green, depending on the scale of the COVID-19 outbreak. The proposal was discussed during Prime Minister's video call with State Chief Ministers on Saturday. According to news agency PTI, no activity will be allowed in the red zone. The districts where sizable number of cases were detected or areas which were declared hotspots. In the orange zone, minimum activities like limited public transport, harvesting of farm products will be allowed, considering only few cases have been found in the past. The green zone will see further relaxation some MSME industries falling under the green zone will be allowed to function with in-house lodging facilities for employees with proper maintenance of social distancing. An assistant sub-inspector's hand was chopped off and two other police officials were injured when a group of people allegedly attacked them in Punjab's Patiala district on Sunday. According to the police, a group of Nihangs, sick men armed with traditional weapons, resorted to violence when their truck was stopped at a vegetable market and they were asked to show curfew passes. The group first rammed their vehicles into the market gate and then the barricades. They then attacked the policemen. An ASI's hand was chopped off by a sword. A station house officer of Sadar Patiala and another official suffered injuries on their arms in the attack. Seven people have been arrested for the incident. The World Bank on Sunday said the coronavirus outbreak has severely disrupted the Indian economy, magnifying pre-existing risk to its outlook. In its South Asia economic update impact of COVID-19, the World Bank estimated the Indian economy to deaccelerate to 5% in 2020. It also projected a sharp growth deacceleration in fiscal 2021 to 2.8% in a baseline scenario. The report added that the services sector will be particularly impacted and a revival in domestic investment is likely to be delayed given enhanced risk aversion on a global scale. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson said he owed his life to the country's National Health Service NHS for helping him beat the novel coronavirus. The 55-year-old Prime Minister issued a short statement hailing the medics as he prepared to spend his seventh night at St. Thomas's Hospital in central London. I can't thank them enough. I owe them my life, he said in the statement. Earlier on Saturday, the Downing Street had said Johnson was now able to take short walks as he continued his recovery from a severe case of COVID-19. 
Saudi Arabia's King Salman extended a nationwide curfew until further notice due to the spread of the new coronavirus. As per latest numbers, the kingdom reported more than 300 new infections each over the last four days, taking total infections to 4,033 cases. With 52 deaths, Saudi reported the highest among the six Gulf Arab states, where the total count has surpassed 13,200, with 88 deaths despite strict measures to curb transmissions. Pope Francis has urged people not to yield to the fear over the coronavirus pandemic, calling on them to be messengers of life in time of death. The leader of the Roman Catholic Church was speaking at his Easter vigil service on Saturday evening in an almost empty St. Peter's Basilica. Members of the world's 1.3 billion Catholic community could follow a live stream of the service. Christians around the world were celebrating Easter, the most important festival in the Christian calendar, despite the restrictions that have left hundreds of millions confined to their homes. Many priests are conducting services in churches with without congregations. With dark clouds looming over the future of IPL 2020, the debate over MS Dhoni's potential India return has intensified. Former chairman of selectors Krishnamachari Srikanth feels that the chances of MSD being picked in India's T20 World Cup squad will be very, very bleak if the 13th edition of the IPL doesn't take place. During a show on Star Sports, Srikanth said that he will not be diplomatic about it. The former India captain added that he was thinking about it from the point of view of what he would have done if he was the chairman of the selection committee. Dhoni last played for India in the semi-final of the 2019 World Cup in July. Former Pakistan fast bowler Shoheb Akhtar feels that MS Dhoni should have hung up his boots after the 2019 World Cup. In an interview to PTI, the Rahul Pindi Express said that Dhoni has served to the best of his ability and he should leave cricket with dignity. Akhtar questioned as to why did MSD drag it for so long while he should have retired after the World Cup. The 44-year-old added that right now, Dhoni seems to be stuck. MSD hasn't made himself available for selection since India's exit from the World Cup semis last year in June. 